This module is about Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi will be covered in two modules actually minimum and this is two parts. First part is basics. So this part is just general about Wi-Fi and then the next module goes into more detail of how A, B, G, C and everything else is different. Okay. So we'll talk about features, physical layers, Mac, architecture, frame powerment and all that. Okay. Um, so, what is the difference between 802.11 and Wi-Fi? Right, when you go to a store, you don't find 802.11, you ask to Best Buy guy, you know, can you give me a 802.11 something, they will say, what is that? Right, you say, I need a Wi-Fi access point, they will give it to you. And so, the reason is, Wi-Fi actually is a trademark of Wi-Fi Alliance, which is Nothing to do with the IEEE, but in, in a strict sense, it's a different organization. IEEE makes 802.11 and Wi-Fi is a group of companies, Wi-Fi Alliance is a group of companies that got together and said, look, this standard is very difficult to implement. Why it is difficult to implement? Because it has hundreds of options. If you implement option number 135 and I implement option number 678, we can't talk to each other. Right? So why don't we decide what options we need to implement? And so they are interoperability group, right? So every time, and basically they are more than interoperability group because they are the one who put all those options in the IEEE in the first place. So they sit down and so they are different from IEEE. IEEE is a standards bodies and they make a standard. In this standard, the standard practice is to accept everything. You want A, I will give you. You want B, I will give it to you. You want C, I will give it to you. Everything is there. but not everybody going to implement ABC, right? So these, these other bodies decide whether we implement A, B, or C, or B and C, or whatever subset we implement. So Wi-Fi is that. So when you find, when you buy a Wi-Fi logo item that says that this will work with another Wi-Fi logo item, regardless of the manufacturer. So that's why you only buy Wi-Fi equipment and not 802.11 equipment because 802.11 I could implement and you could implement and we could not talk. Is that clear? And wireless fidelity, fidelity simply means that, you know, compatibility. And if you want to know about Wi-Fi, you go to Wi-Fi.org. If you want to go to IEEE.org, you will find 802.11. And so the, I said everything about the Wi-Fi. Now, IEEE has a numbering system, so we will be using lots of these. I want to make sure that everybody is up to date on how these numbers, what these numbers mean. So 802, some people think that 802 reference, reference, represents February 1980 when the first IEEE standards committee was formed. I was there at that time. First IEEE standard committee was formed for Ethernet and they call it 802. 8002 something whatever 82 and then lots of other committees are formed okay 802.1 is the basic that applies to all of the 802s so you would have 802.3 this ethernet 802.11 is wi-fi 17 is rpr 16 is wimax and there's a whole list which we'll see soon but regardless of what 802 number you have all of these 802s follow common standards. They all have the same security mechanism, 802.10. They have the same management standard, 802.1. They have the same bridging. They have the same logical link control and so on and so forth. So the 802 is a group. And if you want to be part of 802, so any standards which starts with word 802, number 802, they have to follow all these common things. Okay. So 802.11 follows 802.1 and 2. That's it. One and two are common. Three is not. Four is not. And three, four, five, six, seven, they're all different. Right. Now, in 802.11, there are many groups. So 802.11, and then we will talk about today about those groups. Those are subgroups. And so the so basically, while in the marketplace we say Ethernet, in the IEEE it is 802.3, in Wi-Fi is 11, by Max is 16, and so on and so forth, right? And there is generally a letter after the number. So 802.11.i, 
that means the ith subgroup in 802.11 they have several subgroups and um, so they will apply to the, this will apply to all 802.11 devices but they will not apply to other 802.11 devices such as 802.15 802.15 is independent of 802.11 they don't have to follow the same security method or anything like that right 15 is jigbee and all that they, they follow 15 wifi is different so standards with upper now there is a case upper case and lower case so a b and you have to be careful from now on because before this you didn't know what the letters case means but they are case sensitive upper case means this is an independent standard and this will stay forever so 802.1 a b is independent standard whereas little like i or w these are temporary these will be there for some time and then they will get merged in the, into the base standard and they will disappear. So, 802.w for example, 2001 was merged with 802.1d 2004 and now it will no longer exist. You cannot find it in IEEE. Okay. The upper case survives, the lower case get merged. So, they, we call the lower case as amendments, they are changes. Right? Upper case are the base standards. And if there is no case, then it is a base standard. For example, 802.11 is a base standard. So, 802.11 little i could be merged with 11. Right? In the beginning, and the, the numbers are standard serially, such as 1a, 1b, 1c, 1d, 1z. When they ran out of z, then they were aa, ab, ac, az, and then bca, and so on and so forth. So, they, are, they, they go by the sequential number. But now they have actually made it slightly change and they not only use these like you know W was merged with D. Now if this W were to be done again in this time frame, they would call it A to 2.1 D little A or B or C or something like that. So they now use like this A to 2.1 Q A U. So this is Q is the base standard and this A U is the amendment. And at some point, that amendment will go back to the main standard. And the main standards yes, keep changing because Q was done at some time ago. And now the latest one might be 2011, 12 or something like that. Okay. So the main standard is reissued after a few years. And they make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So 11 now. Back to 11. 11 was done in 1997 original one but today if you go to buy you can't find 1997 you will find 2012 so 1997 one had one and two megabits only two speeds the newer versions now newer amendments allow it to run at higher speeds all versions use license exempt spectrum so when I was working for Vimax Forum and we were very particular about what terms we use, license exempt means that you don't need to get a license. And unlicensed means it is illegal. If you, so basically, if you use unlicensed spectrum means you are using somebody else's thing, you know. Right? But now I have, and I was very particular to teach my students, please don't use the word unlicensed. Use license exempt. Okay? But now people don't know all that. So I see the literature from the marketing people, from the companies that have given up on that request. So today, unlicensed and license exempt are used synonymously. But really, license exempt means you are legally using it, you are exempt from license. Right? And there is a license spectrum, there is unlicensed, sorry, a license exempt spectrum. Right? If you if you use illegally, then it is unlicensed. So, so anyway, so you understand the difference. From now on, try to use license exempt when you are that. Now, at all frequencies. The license exemption is available at many frequencies. Alright, so there is license exemption. Need ways to share spectrum along multiple users and so for, so whenever they give you this much band, they say, okay, this much band is license exempt. Then they will say that that means that you cannot just hog it. You have to be able to share it with everybody else. Right? And uh, so, in Wi-Fi, they used spread spectrum. Now, the reason I defined spread spectrum before is that now I don't have to worry about it. You know what is spread spectrum. Hopefully, you still know. Okay? Spread spectrum. 
three phi's and this had three physical layers a to 2 minus 11 one was direct sequence spread spectrum now i suppose you know remember that one too direct sequence spread spectrum and the second was frequency hopping and third was infrared diffused infrared now most of you probably don't remember infrared but your remote controls use red light which is infrared actually it is not red it is infrared it is close to red okay and so previously the computers used the same frequencies you know for short distance communication they had a red thing in the back you could put the two computers in line with it or you could align your computer with the with the printer and it will tag infrared we don't no longer use that anymore but that was in 1997 11 sorry 1997 <coughs> it used supports multiple priorities supports time critical and data traffic so it also supports time critical application and allows power management so these nodes can sleep when they are not working. Alright, so these were the features.